Once upon a time, there was a plucky squire named Jot. Jot lived in the land of Mojo, a land of creativity. Mojo was ruled by the gentle queen, Chroma. He defended the land from the nefarious sorcerer, Humgrum. Which everyone very much appreciated. Good lad! Well done, Racky. Jot was also a writer and would transcribe his many adventures in book form. These tales were avidly read by all the people of the land, who found them quite gripping. Jot awoke one fine morning and pluckily leapt from his bed. From afar, he could hear some rather exciting music. He got dressed and went to investigate. Chapter 1 Some Serious Beeswax This was the house of the good wizard, Moonbeard, Jod's close friend and mentor. Ah, Jot, my lad, he explained. I'm on a roll here, traveling to new musical realms. Since you're here, lad, I have a small favor to ask. Wax. I need more wax, lad. To press more records, you know. Would you go to Honey Peak and get some wax from Benny B? Pip here will accompany you.
Honey Peak. Now, this looked really quite precarious. Honey Badger seemed rather annoyed. Jot prepared for a dust up. The beast was bested. Yeah. The plucky squire triumphant. Down they fell! It was time to confer with Moonbeard. It was Violet. Violet was a trainee witch with a love of art. And Jot's childhood friend.
Chapter 2 Tome Tower Our heroes hug on to the cliff's edge by their fingernails, when suddenly they were grabbed and hoisted up. By whom? By Thrash. Thrash was a mountain troll. And Jort and Violet's childhood friend. The trio had not been together for quite a while. And so were very happy to be reunited.
Our trio stopped in their tracks, there, on the horizon, loomed Toe Tower.
Jot made his way up the steep steps. And so, the Pluggy Squire once again defeated the wretched wizard Humgrum.
Chapter 3 Moonbeard
And so our heroes set off to Artia City to visit the good queen, Chroma. Chapter 4 A Treacherous Trail On the way to Artia, our heroes took a shortcut through the aquatic land known as the Sonnet Swamps. Thank you. 
Thank <laughs> you. 
Jot cleared his mind. Now he was ready to grab the fish. Fish grabbed. The plucky squire gently released the fish into the water. And there it regained its composure. Our heroes ventured on. The sounds of the daytime chorus began to fade, and the light began to dwindle.
Bugs. Jot read it the elven bow. It was time to put its powers to the test. Jot drew his bow back as far as he could. And shot that creature right in the eye. Lucky Squire had squashed the bugs.
Jock could hear the big buck through the entranceway. He readied his bow. It was time to finish this, once and for all. The bug was bestie. Yeah. Look, lucky squire, triumphant. Finally, our heroes were out of the swamps. The sun on their faces felt most pleasant as they continued on their way. After some time, they arrived. At Artia. Chapter 5, Artia
Crash looked on in shock. What was happening in his homeland?
Chapter 6. Very Metal Our heroes reflected upon this rather explosive development and decided that Jot and Thrash should investigate at once. After a bracing trek across the wilds of Mojo, Jot and Thrash arrived at Trog Mountain. They proceeded to scale its slopes, ascending to the top to get to the bottom of all this bother. After a good climb, they arrived at a lofty plateau.
Our heroes climb the sheer cliff face, ascending to even greater heights. Let's see if you've got that strong spirit in you. Set crop. And thrash. <laughs> Accepted the challenge.
this look dangerous?
Once again, our heroes scaled the perilous rock face and steeled themselves for a wild encounter. The Mega Eagle. It seemed rather annoying. Descending upon our heroes with a combative cry. Thrash twirled his drumsticks and got ready to rumble. The Mega Eagle soared into the starry sky, an impressed smile upon its beak. Meanwhile, across the land, at Moonbeard's house, Back at Trog Mountain, our heroes continued their ascent.
Our heroes came to a sudden halt. Ahead of them was Trog Village, wrecked by the mining blast, and crisscrossed by giant tracks. The giant tracks of a giant machine.
the giant machine fell. and explode on the ground below into approximately 280 million pieces. Jart and Thrash looked down from the cliffside. In the very far distance, they could spy a convoy speeding away. Our heroes set off to find out where Humgrump's cavalcade was heading. Chapter 7 Beach Battle Boogie Our heroes followed the cavalcade to the coast, to the funky land of Boogie Beach.
Jot and Tumba beheld the funky land of Boogie Beach.
our heroes climbed to a grassy vantage point and looked below to see an enormous clanking machine. From the machine rolled scores of dangerous looking vehicles. Which before our hero's eyes sped away towards Artia. And so, our heroes sprinted off to Artia! Chapter 8 Clash at the Castle The gang arrived at Artia to see the aftermath of a great battle. The army of Artia had been thoroughly defeated by Humdrump's forces. Thank you. 
Violet readied her wand. It was time to get magical. Violet was victorious. Oh. And her former schoolmates quite flabbergasted. And now Humgrum sat upon the Arctic throne to claim his rightful role 
as the grand ruler of all of Mojo. Once upon a time, there was a magnificent wizard named Humgrump. Lord Humgrump ruled the land of Mojo, overlooking all from his splendid palace. He was the ruler of Mojo because he was the greatest person who had ever lived in the land, and he knew what was best for its people. The loyal ones would be treated with great grace and fairness and taxed at the very reasonable rate of 96%. The disloyal ones, well, they would be put in their place. And that was a place which was many miles underground and was known as Deep Doom. One such disloyal subject was the wretched Squire Jot, who found himself now imprisoned in a cell in the depths of Deep Doom, which was exactly where he belonged. The traitor Jot peered into the terrifying darkness of the vent, <gasps> inside which awaited a frightening and ultimately lonely death. <gasps> the energy beam looked warm and enticing. Now there were two wretched fugitives. Not a great development.
Ahead of the fugitives lay a data center, stocked full of wonderful, life-affirming paperwork. And patrolled by highly competent guards. The traitorous rodent prepared to sneak through its corridors. A plan quite obviously doomed to hilarious failure. The horrid little mouse had made it past the troops. And opened a vent to let his equally horrid associate through. This turn of events was... Not very pleasing. Oh dear. A complete and utter dead end. There was absolutely nothing to see over this way. Bother!
Now there were three of them. Could they not just sit still? Another data center lay ahead of the treacherous trio. The cocky rodent prepared to sneak his way through again with an air of smug arrogance that would no doubt be his undoing. Once again, the furry little nuisance had somehow made it through. And once again, granted access to his chatted colleagues. This outcome was not great. And rather brought into question the competency of the guards and the effectiveness of their training curriculum. If one rat
of them now? This was really just too much.
The third data center lay ahead of the band of miscreants. Once again, the wretched rodent prepared to scuttle through. However, the guards would now certainly apprehend their prey, having recently undergone extensive training in their core competencies.
Well, what a great load of good all the guards' training had done. A stellar job all round stopping the wretched rodent from getting past and granting access to his chums. The troops would surely be commending each other for their flawless performance. From the bottom of the pit into which they would soon be banished. band of botherers emerged and laid their eyes upon their undoing. A very solid, very closed iron door. Very solid, very open iron door. fugitives made their traitorous ascent towards the surface. The elevator cable proving annoyingly reluctant to snap. And so they arrived at the surface. And with uncomprehending awe in their traitorous eyes, they gazed upwards to see... The monumentally majestic Palace of Humdrum. Young Hamgrun fancied himself as a poet. Oh, butterfly, why do you fly? Nothing but a butterfly. Flitter, butter, flitter, butter. Butter, flitter, butter, flitter. Butter, butter, 
Flu? He sent his poems to all the publishers in Mojo. But he was rejected by each and every one. He vowed never to release another poem into the ungrateful world. His anguish would eventually transform into rage that would propel him towards his ultimate destiny. The symbol of his rejection would become the symbol of his vengeance against an unjust world. The symbol of the humble butterfly. I have been observing you. What a journey you have been on. What challenges you have overcome. What? Years you have confronted. And yet, all your efforts have been for naught. You are under the impression that you might stop me or do me harm. But that is impossible. For I am unstoppable. You see, I, Humgrump, now control the book, and so control our reality. And one who controls the very fabric of reality cannot be stopped.
The little twerp humdrum zapped me and vaporized me into a cloud of ink. Or rather undignified, I must say. In my cloudy form, I floated wispily through the room until I finally landed upon a sheet of ultra-absorbent kitchen roll and, through a little magic, found myself Reform. The Mega Eagle. It seemed rather annoyed. Descending upon our heroes with a combative cry. Thrash twirled his drumsticks and got ready to rumble.
Violet readied her wand. It was time to get magical. Honey Badger seemed rather annoyed. Jot prepared for a dust up.
And so, after battling Humdrump's remaining army, the forces of good reclaimed the land of Mojo and brought peace back to the land. Archia Castle was restored to its former glory, and the people of Mojo came from far and wide to gather at the town. Celebrating their freedom with a marvelous party. <gasps> Taking a break from the revelry, Jot noticed something. A robed figure standing near the entrance to the castle. He made his way over there to investigate. Yeah! The 